Here's how to cut your own hair at home so you can grow it out and keep it healthy while also shaping it. So let's transform my hair from this to this. So I'm starting with uneven hair that is dying for a haircut to make it even and rounder and healthier overall. I did an experiment on each side of my hair and you can tell which side had the product that caused breakage. So we learned from that and are moving forward with a fresh cut so I'm starting with a really good wash and I'm using the Redken Acetic Bonding Concentrate Shampoo, which is great for color treated or damaged hair and also makes my scalp feel really good and gets out all the product buildup I currently have in my hair so I can reset. Rinse that out, then I'm going in with my favorite protein treatment that I happened across on Amazon one day and it makes my hair feel really healthy and get curlier and it's from this random brand called High Pro Pack and I'll link it but this is going to make my curls so defined and it'll be easier to see the shape and layers and also come out with an overall healthier head of hair and I leave this on for 15 minutes even though it says two to five, but whatever. Then I rinse it out of my hair and I'm using a thick conditioner because my hair needs a lot of moisture, it's very porous, but also because it holds my curls together well, which is what I need for the dry part of this cut. So this Joico Moisture Recovery Conditioner is goaded for that. And I've used it for years throughout many videos in old packaging and it never disappoints. Make sure you detangle your hair well so it's easy to work with while cutting it. I'm making a center part all the way down the back and look at this length difference. This is why I record everything and post it so you guys know what to do and what not to do. So don't use an aggressive color remover twice in one day. <laughs> this length difference is disgusting, Ugh! but let's fix that. You're gonna need to section your hair into four quadrants. So we have two front sections and two in the back since these will be cut differently. And I'm working with small sections at a time starting in the back on the shorter side to make sure I get everything that needs to be cut and then even out on the other side. I'm using a fine tooth comb to detangle and pull evenly outwards, then saving that angle between my fingers and holding it where I can see so I can cut a straight line across and using hair scissors to cut one to two inches. I'm also cutting this short piece's end. It feels so much nicer and easier to run my fingers through now. Then moving on to the next section, I'm making sure it's wet and detangled and adding a chunk of the freshly cut hair as a length guide and then cutting it to match. And this piece was long and thin, so it needed to go. Now I'm pulling the same section a little more out and upward, kinda like at the zenith of my head so I can add layers. And when you pull it forward, you can see that the straight line is now slanted due to the new angle. So I'm cutting it straight across again. So the top pieces will end higher than the lower pieces, therefore forming layers. Next section, I'm adding another guide piece, cutting off the ends, then going in at a higher angle to cut the layers. And you can already see that these layers are layering at a beautiful curve that I made to shape my curls so I don't get the dreaded triangle of sadness hair. I'm matching up the hair from the underside of my ear with the already cut side to make sure the sides turn out even. So I'm cutting a lot off of this side and then meeting them in the middle to double check before using this chunk as a guide for all the other cuts. Now I'm doing the same technique on the other back side and cutting about four inches to match the length. And the way that I choose the length of my hair is by taking the shortest piece, which was on the other side, and cutting it to the length that eliminates all the split ends, the sparse areas, the long straggly pieces, and ends up with a fuller blunt cut for ultimate health, especially because I'm on a mission to grow out my hair as healthily as possible for dyed hair. And it's important to get split ends before they split all the way up the hair shaft and to have blunter ends so the section is stronger and less likely to break off. I'm cutting so much on this side because of the experiment mishap, but it needed to be done and I know I can get back to this length, but even healthier. I'm so happy with these layers and don't forget to cut the little hairs around the nape of your neck too. And once you're done with the back, now it's time to move on to the front, wet it, detangle, and then get started with the guide piece using the same method, but we're using a different method to add the layers in the front. So once you do the first cut, you want to redirect your hair forwards towards your face and then cut the angle in. And don't forget the ends of your baby hairs too, because I'm trying to grow those into teenage hairs eventually. Next section, use the guide, cut, pull forwards, add the layers. By doing it this way, your front pieces will be shorter and frame your face and gradiate longer as you go back. For the section next to your middle part, you can over direct your hair 
for even more intense face framing if you want or use this technique to make flattering bangs, which I'm not doing, I'm trying to grow it this time. And look at those layers, baby hairs, and then time to match the side lengths again. This is like five inches of hair straight, but I know I'll get there again. I've been using hair growth methods to get fuller, longer, healthier hair, and I'm determined to get it super long before my next crisis where I impulsively cut it all off, but who knows when that will be. I'll make a video about all my methods and give updates along the way, but this cut is now where I'm starting from, so let's track this growth over the next few years and see how well my methods work. This is a hair growth oil blend that I made myself based on research of the best oils, essential oils, and ingredients that best stimulate the scalp and promote growth. And it also happens to smell amazing to the point where I get compliments on my perfume when it's really just my hair oil and it's been working really well, especially along my edges, which haven't been this long for as long as I can remember. And it's also nice on the length of my hair. I'm adding more conditioner to make my hair as hydrated as possible and brush it out admire the layers, and start finger curling. I used a good amount of product and oil in my hair so I could get the most defined finger curls possible because I'm going to be doing a dry cut once it's fully dry so I can check each individual curl and also adjust any shaping based on how it looks when it's dry. This is how it looks after air drying and the shape is exactly what I expected. It feels so much healthier. I have the layers I wanted and now I'm ready to go in and do any little tweaks and inspect individual curls. This side was a little disjointed so I went in and turned that middle section into more of an angle and less flat. So now I have four main layers and the curve that I was looking for. This is how the back looks, which was almost perfect except for a couple rogue curls in the middle. So I grabbed those and trimmed them to make the shape rounder and added a little water on the end to see how it would naturally curl back up so I don't cut too much off when the ends shrink back up. And now I have the shape that I wanted. Do the same for any curls with scraggly ends if you find any. And now I'm really happy with the shape, the layers, and the way my hair feels after this fresh cut and my hair is finally even again. <laughs> <laughs> Using a lot of oil and finger curling gives a lower volume, higher definition look. And here's what it looks like without finger curling and less oil. And I definitely like both looks because I love to have options. And I'll be changing the color soon, so stay tuned for that.